and we are live namaste welcome to another session of uh, charinar today we are talking of customer experience all of us feel it all of us deliver it or all of us are on the receiving end what today we are going to talk about as you might have seen in our posters we are going to talk about how customer experience impacts us as organizations how is it that you actually deliver customer experience is it the same as let's say uh, customer service is it the same as customer strategy what what is it how do you actually bring this together is it about just the selling part is it about servicing what is it why is it that important why is everybody talking about it and to talk about that today we have a lo lovely very disparate panel i think let allow me to introduce you to them starting with preeti vyas she is the ceo and president of ck media ck media is amar chitra katha i would be very surprised if you do not know or have not read an amar chitra katha comic ever in your life yeah? priti has a has a series of experiences in publishing in this kind of publishing content retail and we thought she would bring valuable pointers valuable insight on what customer experience could be especially and i have heard her speak about this in the earlier what customer experience meant during this entire pandemic thingy which was which was on welcome priti thank you so much thank you next is satya and i'm just going clockwise on, on my screen satya was mentioning earlier he is not a technologist but now is a business technologist with a startup he runs madras mind works i'll just leave it at they do very interesting work in the augmented reality and virtual reality area and we would love for such a to talk about how does ar vr really come into play is it just a technology fad how does it really play a very significant part or could play a significant part in cx darshan thank you is an old old friend from a, from a long time back we were just talking this is the first time that i am seeing him live after maybe i don't know some 20 ish years so delighted to see you darshan darshan has done the entire gamut of the it service type of industry uh, he used to be in mumbai for a period of time then he's been living in boston that's where he is he has worked in all kinds of it services companies but the reason why i feel interested in what he has to offer today in our conversation is that over a period of time he has taken a specific interest in cx he also is a cx expert obviously and runs a consulting company of his own from boston thank you so much thanks for the finally koshik i don't feel like saying partner in crime but partner in goodness let's say partner in goodness he represents uh, network gain is the md of network gain and they are the co sponsors along with trinan for running chatira koshik has a bunch of it services experience he loves to sell and that's one of the reasons why is hosting the experience your session today then finally i am yashwant rudar my name is sohas i am a founder partner of trinan i'll let you guys run take care thank you thank you sohas thank you thank you sohas thank you that's for the short and nice introduction so guys back to us and we were discussing about customer experience and i presume that experience is going to be carried over and demonstrated in today's call right and like sohas mentioned can we start off with first just putting some definition around what customer experience is all about and why don't we start with you darshan so again thanks and you know again an honor to be a part of this one. um so yeah i think that's a very pertinent question you know i've seen the context of uh, customer experience translate to just being a service offered by the specific end user to something that you do once you acquire a customer and so on right so there's various definitions out there what i like to think about customer experience is the way an organization interacts with all its constituents you know i would like to move away from the word customer to constituent experience which include employees your suppliers your vendor partners and the entire gamut of the universe you interact with and at every touch point of the organization the experience you create the emotion the empathy the trust that you generate and the brand image and cognition that you have defines the customer experience so i believe in a holistic total customer experience or a total constituent experience kind of definition of customer experience and not limited to either a specific service offering or a product 
Perfect. I think that's the tone for the whole thing as well, right? And so is it part of Satya to you would be, should you see that in every interaction with the customer or is there a specific experience with that? Yeah. So first of all, just before getting into the topic, I would uh, congratulate uh, Chatting Art for being very consistent in organizing such knowledge sessions. I've been an audience for a lot of the sessions and I really loved it and uh, keep going. That's the first point. And let's get into the topic. Uh, See, customer experience, if you ask me, I'll talk in lemon terms. So there is a transaction, always look at the economic point where there's a supply and demand and uh, the demand is the consumption part where the user tries to consume some product, be it service, be it anything. So customer experience is a very nice word that uh, tries to capture the emotional part of it, the feeling part of it. It's it's not just the transaction part of it. So. This transaction definitely will have, every transaction will have its own uh, numbers and whatever you call the monetary uh, benefits. But what feelings that do you really sync with? It's not just e emoting the feelings. Definitely there, there's a large gamut of tastes, uh, including different personas, different cultural uh, de demographies, or have so much variations. And with all these variations put together, if you can really uh, sync up with the uh, feeling of the customer while delivering the product, or maybe the, if the delivery is, uh, the consumption is through a longer period, wherever like Darshan, the touch points, wherever you have the touch points, if you can really sync up with the feelings, make it more delightful and there is a true genuinity, then it tries to uh, define customer needs. Definition is quite difficult, but still I have to put my own thoughts. So, so that also brings a very interesting perspective, uh, Preeti, and I think all the audiences wants to ask this of you, right? But today, the customers are also fairly experienced. They understand what they want. To look at ACK, for instance, you're talking about 50 plus years of experience. Basically, two things we want to ask of you. One, what was Anand's mindset when he started this, when he was addressing a target audience who can't even define what their needs are, right? And how did you move from the traditional world into the digital world? And as a CEO president, what is that that you see the importance of bringing experience? Yes, uh, thanks for that, Ashik. Uh, so when we talk about customer experience, you know, I think of the words that come to mind. I was just jotting them down that how does a customer use your product? How is a customer engaging with my product? How is a customer immersing themselves uh, in the world of my product? Uh, when I when we talk about Amachitakatha, which is, as you mentioned, 53 years old now, uh, we also run a brand called Tinkle. Tinkle is in its 41st year as a magazine. Uh, we are also the Indian licensees for National Geographic. So we publish National Geographic magazine and National Geographic Traveler India. Uh, and I have my own publishing house called Fun OK Please. Uh, all of this, right? And the way I, I see that the more things change, the more they remain the same as well at their core. Uh, so what uh, Mr. Pai, his vision uh, for giving Indian children, uh, as he called it, a route to, to their roots right a connect with their own culture that's what was the uh, at the fulcrum of what he was trying to do because he felt this great disconnect between uh, indian children knowing more about western and foreign culture than their own uh, and using the root of storytelling and a very immersive colorful interactive fun world of the comic book which is a, the most non-intimidating reading that you can expose a child to so I think that essence remains the same, whether it was the analog age or the digital, we are still storytellers. Uh, that's what we keep, I keep reminding our team and that's what we tell ourselves every morning that we are storytellers. Our job is to tell stories. The comic book uh, could be consumed, the story consumed as a physical book. It could now be consumed. We have our own app. So you could be reading it uh, digitally on the app. You could go to Kindle and read it as an ebook. You could go to Alexa and you could play some uh, an ACK quiz and get get the story from there uh, you know you could uh, listen to some podcast uh, you could do play a game you could go and watch animated shows there are multiple ways in which the consumer and the customer can now can now engage with your content right we are but at the core of it our job is to just keep on telling more and more stories so you know mr anand pai creates this profound body of work so our our mission is uh, to keep that legacy alive to make sure like you said you know uh, suhas was sharing you have those bound volumes so we do want those that legacy to continue uh, but we want to tell more stories and stories and tell them in different ways and we want people like suhas to update their collection and go and go out and buy the new work that we are doing as well 
So yes, engage with us as storytellers, and that's in a nutshell what the experience, customer experience means to us. Fabulous, fabulous. So that's what you mean, Darshan. From an expert point of view, is it important for this to sell? I mean, is this a tool to sell more? Talked about wanting to sell more. Is, is that going to help us do that? Selling is a byproduct. You know, I loved what Preeti touched upon, and I'll kind of you know say that she talked about going to the roots. You know, what I infer is that you are connecting at a deeper emotional level, and the experience, though it is unique to each one of us, you know, the universality of the way in which that is empowered, you know, through your ethnic cultural roots, is phenomenal, right? You are making it personal because as I read the comic, I dream about certain things. You know, I dream about the heroes that I I read about or heard from my grandparents, and so right. So there's a deeper emotional connect that automatically builds affinity to that brand, and that gives me a level of trust for the brand, and that improves selling. So the objective, you know, and and I'll I'll touch upon it later as we speak. You know, the dark arts of selling. Sorry, I don't mean it in the wrong way. Uh, but it's there's a lot of manipulation going on today, and we'll touch upon that later. The other part, which importantly she touched upon, was the multitude of touch points, devices, and technology that is available today. Now, for each one of these, the way you connect and engage with the customer is different. Also, the demography is different. So, how do you maintain, manage all these different expectations through devices, different touch points? I think that's the top organizations. And how do you manage that same level of engagement, the same level of experience that you generate? I think that is key. And if you master that, the selling comes on its own. You don't need to sell. And that's what I believe is the true power of customer experience. Not about selling, but creating the culture and the brand behind it, which automatically sells for you. But but there are many brands, many cultures that we have seen claiming to be seemingly successful on the financial metrics. But but when it comes to the true experience, either during or post a sale or post a interaction, has been very poor, right? So how do we go about it? Particularly in your case, Preeti, have you had customers exiting ACK or subscription to ACK and things? So at the fifty-three year history, we've had our ups and downs. Distribution has been a challenge. There are there were a couple of years in uh, in between where we were out of print as well. Where there were there were no new books being printed because of various you know ownership changes, manner changes, all of those. So that's a big disconnect. I don't have my basic product available in the market, right? <laughs> that's that's a huge disconnect. Uh, but that of course that has changed now, and we are uh, we sell more than uh, you know we we sell over five million books in physical for itself. Uh, and uh, now with digital, that's a new challenge. Our team is suddenly has woken up to the entire. It's a very fast learning curve for us. So, uh, a campaign we ran at the beginning of the lockdown last year suddenly went viral, and we went from having seventy-five thousand users on our apps to about half a million uh, in a span of almost fifteen days. And we we were not anticipating, so we were not prepared for the thing crashing and slow downloads and things jamming and people leaving as well. So we had to do that learning very quickly. So in the digital age, a customer leave is about this, right? The devices it takes your app takes too long to download, or your story. I I can't pinch and zoom into a panel and see the details. So I have to work on on those aspects to keep the stickiness, to keep the engagement, because the story in its pure form is beautiful. Uh, so we have to make sure that we're supporting it. Uh, but the beauty is also how consumers and customers go on the learning curve with you. You know, if they believe in your brand and they have that. Sense of loyalty because there is no replacement to our Machitza Katha. There is no real competition as such, right? There is no other replacement. So we had parents writing and saying they were using like a screen mirroring function from their phone to cast our app onto a TV screen, and the whole family in a post lunch ritual was reading one comic every day after lunch. And I thought that was beautiful. That was a beautiful way for man to step into its digital avatar uh, and make itself meaningful and build that emotional bond with a new generation of readers because. Uh, I love the fact that people of our age group still hold on to it, but honestly, the challenge for us is to have children of this generation reading. Eventually, this market is going to die, right? So we always need the the current generation to connect and you know feel that sense of ownership of the brand as well. Fabulous. So Satya, for them, at least from a consultant point, from a product point of view, it's fairly straightforward. You run a startup which has got both the product and the services aspect. Do you feel the customer experience and customer service is not the same, or are they different? How do you? 
Yeah, it's uh, absolutely different because customer service is is kind of uh, you want the contracts and uh, the terms are quite defined. Customer experience is quite uh, you know uh, wishful uh, thinking for the companies. Uh, it's really I would to narrate an incident from our own past. So we did a beautiful product prototype and everything was good working. The moment we stepped into the you know target customer and we demoed the product. And uh, they were not even able to understand. See, all the keys, all, all of us, we sit in the room and we code for night and days. And we love our own products, right? So when we design the products, we always have that feeling. But when we take it to the face of the customer, he kind of he, it, it's not uh, wrong. What happens? They are they are used to some other trend, right? They are using TikTok. They are they are, they are used to some other interface or some other way of uh, thinking. So they kind of, uh, their hands are struggling and we had to understand. So those uh, understanding those finer prints on what, what is that happening in the mind. So why are they struggling? So that is the most critical part. And uh, if we really think it from the customer experience point of view, it is a very, very vast subject. You know, it's, I think uh, small companies like us, we, we try, fail and learn and then we come back. We have a better product where the customer is able to appreciate it. So that also brings a question to you, Mr. Expert Darshan, uh, in terms of are there any companies or any type of business that you think is not going to benefit from a customer experience? I think that is rare, right? If you are either developing something or you are, it, it could be a product, it could be a service or your own personal brand, right? You yourself, when you present yourself to anybody, a particular prospect, a partner, or even your ecosystem per se, you are actually creating that experience. You know, our first touch point creates what, what they call is the first 10 seconds, say, right? You form an opinion in the first 10 seconds. But I, I want to just reflect on what Satya said, right? You know, I also mentor a lot of startups. And this is a very, very classic, I would say a dilemma that class uh, startups or founders or entrepreneurs get into. And one of the things I would highly recommend everybody, you know, there's, uh, you know, I, I do a human centered design. And the idea is even before you write a piece of code, you can even just prototype on a piece of paper. You know, you can even do a clickable prototype. But go out there and talk to the customers, understand what are their pains, why need that product, you know, how will they use it? And then what I call is the friction quotient. What is the friction or the learning curve for a constituent to adopt your product? One is, is like, for example, if you're as lucky as Preeti, where you have a complete market monopoly, right? There's no competition. Uh, then you are struggling with getting the, you know, Gen Z and so on on board. But in this case, you first want to make sure that you get your first 10, 20 customers who then become your proponent. And I, that is the whole life cycle, you know, that I, I would recommend you go through. You look, the selling or, or, you know, in the narrow sense of selling starts even before you actually show the product. Because all of us, how many of us buy without actually looking at the number of stars the product has? You know, how many of us buy without talking to our friends, families, or looking at, you know, I, I usually start with the lowest star to say, okay, what's wrong with the product before I go on to the higher ones, right? And so the education, what, what perception out there about your product, even if it's you are in a white space, it's there where it starts with, you know, to your question about where it doesn't apply. I would flip it a bit to say that even large corporations, branded logos have seen a serious backlash when there is a disconnect between what they stand for versus what they propose their brand is about. And there is a disconnect between that and that causes a dissonance within the customer segment. And you've seen a lot of people kind of, you know, I don't want to use the word cancel culture, but you don't want to then use the product because somehow that, that luxury product or that fantastic product suddenly starts to equate with something you don't align with yourself. So these are a lot of finer points. You know, you're a startup, enterprise, corporate, in any field, I think it's, it's critical to have that kind of emotional connect trust and empathy built into whatever you do. Absolutely. But but actually, you know what, I'm going to put all of you on the spot. We all come from a country where at least the experience on the ground, the reality is not what we are hearing so far, right? I mean, this looks very, very bookish, very theoretical. We all wish this was the ideal world in which we live. But tell me the top Indian brands, you don't have to quote if you don't want to quote, but at least from my perspective, I feel 
this is all like a ticket a box stating is yes, that exist but go buy a ticket travel see the experience book a car see the experience or even go to a grocery store you want to go and come about the last brought down and then you see there is some complaint about it they don't really care if you choose not to buy from them so kaushik i would i would disagree right i i you know i, I think all of us as consultants you know lived out of a suitcase traveled across god knows how many countries cities i believe that the human connect that we have in our continent you can't beat it take the iconic logos you know i'll take a name of the maharaja in india right what does that invoke a sense of luxury a sense of uh, you know trust right empathy uh, forget what's happening now but i'm i'm just saying think of those um, palace on wheels right think about amul for example or amar chitra katha for example right those automatically invoke that level of human connect one of the things and i was talking to one of the customer you know uh, the big box retail phenomena that's sweeping across the world today you go down to your corner store that person knows you probably knew your grandfather knew knows your children which school they go to there's this connect and you won't believe i have uh, what we call as the silent generation uh, in as past as the marketing lingo in our neighborhood they go to the grocery store perhaps every day and i ask why do you guys go to the grocery store every day i mean i forget now the pandemic right and they say because oh the butcher knows me they buy stamps at the grocery store and i'm like seriously they go to get that human connect right why do branch of banks exist today you can do virtually everything online to get that human connect and i think we have a roots in the human connect but where we fail is thing that happen through the entire transaction because the transaction is perhaps steeped in bureaucracy there are you know elements involved and that's where perhaps you see the friction but the human connect you know i can attest to that you can't beat it so is is that the same thing the pretty boy from your point of view while i know this is a brand that is to reckon with in general when you talk about this human intent mm-hmm. so and and you have moved from a very human centric to a technology enabled so yeah. just give some parallel around stating how important is this human intent how is the technology enabling or technology is the key part yeah so what happens is that it's a it's it's a bit of a mixed bag while there is so much love for the brand there are still a, a lot of obstacles right number one is uh, indian consumers don't believe in paying for content right especially i mean if it's a physical book they get that they have to pay for this but if it's something which is uh, on the internet it's it should be free uh, i should knowledge begin i should be able to access it for free so that's one big challenge privacy is a big problem for us okay a lot of people think that amachita katha is not alive anymore and you'll see entire google drive folders being shared around and i have written blogs and we do a lot of advocacy to say that uh, and there's also the thought that oh it's knowledge and knowledge is is, is free and i said no it's not it, it costs money to create this content right so that's one problem second is that while we are trying to go digital and we see digital as having so many advantages a simple thing like uh the app subscription gives you access to 400 500 comics right which it's it's so amazing to have that a uh, multiple languages right so all of the content which is in print we only have 210 titles in print on digital we have everything available so there are so many benefits but when it to education is or the teaching community there is so much resistance to reading anything digitally right uh, and that advocacy and that that mindset needs to be changed from parents and teachers both telling them that look the screen is here to stay and just like you have a a plate or a thali in front of you now which is up to you what you fill with that on that plate are you going to give your kid you know pizza and 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 junk fries on it or are you going to put something healthy the screen is there in your child's life are you going to give them junk are you going to give them amuchit katha to read so all of stepping into the digital age although the, the brand is so loved we still have to uh, and all of this only happens through through human connect through interaction through uh, you know we do a lot of online storytelling sessions we do sessions with schools uh, most of sessions are free we don't charge for them because we need to get people to adopt to and adapt to the new technology so you can't escape the human connect 
thank god for that right and like darshan was saying my neighborhood supermarket is the best example this guy is on whatsapp with me so i don't need to call him he's sending me photographs of new products in his store and right now even as we speak i have five boys inside my house because it's my son's birthday over the weekend and i need an urgent need an ice cream so i just called him and the ice cream is here already uh, you know so it's it's that level of uh, uh, responsiveness uh, enabled by technology again and i paid him online as well so it's all all done <laughs> that's good good i think but there also satya to your point in products that you're trying to solve some of these puzzles pieces of the puzzle so tell me i mean uh, while there is good she has the while you know the whatsapp number engaging ordering ice cream and getting it in 10 minutes all great but how about privacy how about respecting the customer's privacy getting into uh, you know those kind of things first thing i would try to answer your first question about uh, the indian consumers okay uh, because the question has a different perspective to answer there is uh, more than customer experience the indian consumer mentality is totally different the way you have to serve is uh, completely you know different you, you can't uh, just copy and uh, do import services or import deliver uh, services like that for your specific question see any product product is a product it has it has multitudes of use right so if you take uh, one specific example uh, like uh, let's take amachitra uh, their their own digital arm the content is created for the print media and you're trying to just extend the content to the uh, digital media just to, you're trying to make a pdf out of the print right so uh, no this uh, is vehemently saying no come on <laughs> no okay <laughs> maybe you're making little bit of animations that's there uh, so okay it's it was still a 2.1 extension not still a pure extension for medium see we are we are having flat screens today and the consumption of media is getting disrupted like she rightly said you have the plate in front of you and the plate has so much capabilities and what you put on the plate matters and you have to really utilize it well and the, uh, if you take ar vr from our perspective We, so the, when we started the company what happened is uh, uh, initially we thought what are we going to do with this new technology after one year of usage we found use case in every industry that became a problem for us because you you know where you want to keep the use case yeah so this then we try to understand so ar vr is a extension of a medium which is the flat screen medium this is the next medium so then in that case as a medium today see uh, during the print media nobody would have imagined that you know you would have videos you would have video conferences these kind of capabilities nobody would have thought of but today we are in this age so tomorrow this medium is going to extend like anything a thoughtful uh, change so a thoughtful transformation to the medium like every everywhere so for print media we have to have uh, a, a particular strategy and maybe when you are changing the medium just like you change the uh, Uh, you know, it is a it, it is a uh, you know department based. It's not digital or it's not even print. So you have to have a, a set. And rightly, as she said, storytelling is the core. If the customers are very clear of what their value is, then it's so easy for us. Otherwise, it's nightmare. <laughs> if she can, if she if she was very right right in telling that our business is storytelling. Everything else is you know it's different. So now that clarity is required. Generally, what happens is sometimes. indian customers are very uh, clever and also they are little lazy right to think also <laughs> sometimes it is for us to go and probe and understand what value they are proposing then maybe we have to convert the value and then you know do design products around it so technology can't serve any value technology can add value to the existing value proposition that we are having maybe it can be catalyst for you know making the value better proposition for the customer but she was also vehemently saying that is not what is right i mean in terms of uh, the the experience itself and she there she was jumping up saying no 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 no, no. we didn't just leave it's, not, it's not just pdf that. no it's not just exactly. pdf definitely not <laughs> it can't be uh, because then the customer is not going to you, you you have to lize the platform for what its capabilities are so the print is yeah you're just reading it but in digital when the minute you go into epub there's so much that you can do with an epub file so for example it, it the each panel it comes up panel by panel on your screen so you can actually pin zoom into each panel and the details that you can that you can see that probably you wouldn't even see it in a print version uh, we see it on the national geographic uh, app as well uh, that customers love seeing it on on the tablet because the photographs look so luscious on the screen 
and you can zoom into details which are not possible zoom into when you're seeing it in print so each each platform offers its own uh, special features and capabilities and we have to uh, really make the most of it to give that elevated experience absolutely Koshik, question coming up from murli yes he's on screen hi um good session guys uh, congratulations <laughs> I have a couple of points to make, you know. There is a couple of movements happening in the user interface, you know. One, one side, uh, voice is disrupting in a major way. Despite all the video immersive experience we are talking about, guys like Alexa, our voice-based system is interrupting in a completely different way. You know, it's, it's more like, uh, you know, if I can use voice as an interface, why do I need a system? Why do I need to download an app if I can connect commerce just with my voice, then it closes the digital divide in a very rapid fashion. So that's something to think about, right? Even if you have a service delivery, do you have an easy access to close the digital divide? Is something to think about, I think. Number two is it's going in the opposite way, which uh, Satya is talking about. You need to have immersive experience. You need to want to go into the environment that you are talking about, you know, whether it is a technology environment, whether it's an entertainment environment or something that you want to learn. So you want to be able to surround your experience with as close to reality as possible. So these two are extremely two opposite end of the spectrum. I think, you know, the print media lies somewhere in between. But something to think about is that while once he is able to connect with customer in certain fashion, there will always be people who want to read and they are somewhere in between and there will always be people who want to immerse themselves in experience. That may be, you know, the Gen X or the Gen Z, you could call it, you know, the future generation, they would definitely want it. So you may want to segment your uh, market, if you will, and their overall orientation to figure out, you know, where do you want to sell your product or this. That actually brings in a perspective, right, in terms of stating is there any measurement yardstick that says what is good customer experience? You already seem to have multiple perspectives of that. So what is good? You know, I think traditionally, you know, measurement of customer experience has always been tough. I think there have been white papers from the Gartners of the world and so on. Most of the people look at the net promoter score as the North Star of what the customer experience is. A lot of people look at repeat customers, retention, churn metrics, uh, loyalty metrics. Uh, advocacy is a big thing that how many more customers are you able to get a loyal customer right referrals i think so there are a lot you know a whole lot of things but i i personally believe that your cultural and brand identity defines all of that and if you have that then every other metrics is of subsidiary to you know what your brand stands for what your culture stands for and i think that's a holistic view of what you want to take if I am a management person and I'm speaking to a management person, I would go into details of those metrics and OKRs and KPIs, stuff like that. Uh, but at an organization or a corporate level, I think it's your brand identity and the culture. And, you know, again, going back to my startups, you know, a lot of startups don't want to focus on these things or it's not in their cognition as well. On their radar is how do I get my first MVP out or how do I get to my first Series X, right, in, in whatever you may choose it. How do I get there? And they miss out on the whole building the culture from the ground up, building that identity that reflects their organization. Uh, I'll also take a, you know, maybe 30 seconds to reflect on some very good points Murli brought. Um, and, you know, I will also say, Satya, you're being modest when you say that ARVR is just an extension. It's a completely new paradigm. And, you know, it's a wonderful set of use cases we are seeing across the industry. Uh, but yes, today, way you interact with either technology or among yourself, there are amazing ways you can do it. You know, there's touch, there's gesture, there is voice, there are senses being involved. And I also would not agree completely that everything is moving digital. In the days when I was in my flights, I would see probably more people who would read actually hold a physical book, including myself. If you're watching a video, yes, you will have a device. Obviously you can't do it on a book on airports, on flights, I've seen, and again, this is across the age spectrum. So there are certain things that are universal. There are certain things and certain type of content that are amenable to certain channels. 
I've also advised a lot of startup in the ed tech space. There was one I'm still working on is in the stealth uh, mode right now. But the classic mistake everybody made in the pandemic was take the thing you have today and just put it in PPTs or, you know, in some form. So now suddenly everything is digital. I've seen professors at reputed industries talking about supply chain courses, which are like, you know, it's a humongous set of presentations, like going over well over three slides, right? Now that, if, as Preeti will acknowledge, if you're in the instruction design, you are an ID and you have to create and curate a course, make it engaging to the specific customer, bring case studies and everything in, it's a completely different task. So for each channel, you have to create content that is specific and defined to that channel. You can't just say, do it once and you know deploy everywhere. This is not like a Xamarin, uh, sorry, I'm using technology. This is not like, you know, build it for an iOS and deploy it on Android as well. It's a completely different paradigm. Absolutely. So Preeti, I'm going to ask you on this. So it, it also increasingly seems that you're not going to be able to satisfy everybody. The experience is not going to remain consistent. So what percentage is acceptable uh, you know, from a corporate perspective, from a business standpoint, what percentage is acceptable bad experience? It's okay. We don't care about them. Okay. No, I would never like to put a number to that. I think call it old fashioned uh, naivete or whatever, but I still think we should always aim for 100% on that. Uh, no customer should be unhappy. No customer should be dissatisfied. Uh, and I personally, as the CEO of the company, I chase every complaint that comes in. I take it very personally because, you know, we to create a new comic, it takes us nearly 18 months to two years. There's so much research, so much authentic, so much fact finding. Each panel is drawn by hand. Even now, it's painstakingly illustrated, colored. There's a lot of effort that goes in. And uh, the experience of that product's own is 100%. So why should the delivery somewhere go wrong then? You know, that's that's really saying you cooked a perfect meal and you forgot to, you know, the, the dhania you put on top was rotten or something like that. Right. That's a real shame to lose a customer because of that kind of delivery experience, uh, because I know on the product side, we are 100 uh, percent. I have that much faith in what we create. And it's been it's a process and it's a which has been you know perfected over you know, 50, 53 years. So we've got that down. So we can't afford to lose customers for these reasons. So I don't know if that answers the question or not, but that's just how I see it. No, no I think that's that's a good perspective. But what is intriguing to me is why this is seemingly from Mr. Pai's days, all the 53 years, this must have been the prime of AC important method for you or for ACK as an entity. Why is it suddenly becoming so important that everybody needs an expert like Darshan? I'm not eating into your business, but I'm saying, why do we need to solicit experts like Darshan? And you know, the way uh, the digital, the from a, from a company perspective, from a business management perspective, the way it changes, let, I'll give you an example. Tinkle magazine has been traditionally going to people's homes, right? Every month you have a tinkle coming home. Now, as a as a creator of that content, once a tinkle goes, I don't know whether the child is reading it cover to cover, which story they are reading. They, we get letters, but it was always a few kids who would reply back. Now with digital, I know exactly how many minutes, I know which page, which story, I know the bounce rate, I know on which page I'm losing them. So just, I'm getting that feedback down to a T and I can implement that. So I become far more responsive and I create a product which is far more suited and responsive to today's generation. And that's that is really exciting. That is really exciting for us to uh, look at how we are creating content, how much fresh content is being consumed versus what archival content is being consumed. Where is the money really coming from? Where is the revenue coming from? Uh, this is a very exciting time for us. Now, if it is not too much, could you also cite a memorable uh, experience that states what changed your perspective? Some feedback that you can think of out of your mind. Some point the stories, if you can quote on this call. We are recording it. We will not. <laughs> no, no, it's, I mean, uh, I think the, the, I'll tell you about how we have adapted or how we are using that. Uh, one is the kind of stories we choose to tell because today's generation is growing up on Frozen and Avengers. Uh, I can't give them something which was made in the 70s. You and me will love it because we grew up on that. At least, I mean, I did, I'm sorry, you must be definitely younger than me. <laughs> but but uh, I can't expect a kid growing up on, on, on Disney's Frozen to read a comic made in 1980 and think it's amazing. They're not going to think that. I have to give them an art style. The art style has to evolve. The technology, the, the, the writing style has to evolve. All of that has to adapt itself. So yeah, we have to adapt to that. And the kind of the themes that we are picking has changed. 
right? So we did a book called Rama's Ring last year, which has uh, different versions of the epics of the Ramayana and short stories from the Ramayana and Mahabharata. One of them has a version where the arrow kills uh, Ravan is fired by Sita and not by Ram. Right, different versions, different epics, different narratives. Now we have Photoshop. In those days, in Uncle Pai's time, they had a 24 uh, palette, you know, watercolor palette to use. Today, we have Photoshop with all the textures and all the amazing qualities. We use all of that to make products which are far more responsive to today's needs. So I would urge everyone on this who's watching this video to please go and check out our new comics as well. Hold on to the past, but please see what the new work that we're doing. And that also means that we need to continue to educate our customers and tell them what has changed. But Satya and Darshan, two of you, with Neil coming in on the video, how many of them get this luxury of having a customer right at the back door to get the customer? <laughs> it's really, yeah, it's it's blessed. I mean, nothing, no other word summarizes. Uh, you know, they're blessed to have a customer on a 24 hour basis, right? <laughs> and a good industry to be in. Yeah, but that's for her. About you on the technology side, what do you think? I mean, what sort of interactions? How do you keep the feedback back and forth? TikTok, once again, I'm saying, including too much into the customer's voice. Again, two examples, right? You just saw Neil and uh, Preeti. We're talking about people like Murli as well, who was forthcoming and giving feedback. Where do you strike a balance? Where do you make sure that you reach out to them? You can't be always developing from an order to maker, right? I mean, going to the customer, taking an order. So how do you strike a uh, you're asking me a very tough question. I don't know cooking. Uh, it's as close as cooking because how do you cook? You taste and you cook, right? So that's the only way you can do. Maybe the first time you go, the only way we, I, I have at least personally done it is have your eyes, ears and minds open when you get such things and it can be so true. You might be expecting in the comment and when you force people to give comment, they will definitely give some comment just to satisfy you and that doesn't work. And you have to wait for that right moment. And in fact, I, I was just lingering with your last question. You know, how do you measure? Right? If you ask me, I, I don't have an answer, but I still have a very you know strong suggestion to all. We have made mistakes out of uh, measurement. Sometimes over measurement kills the you know essence. Right? It's like salt in your. Uh, if you if you overdo it, you're completely gone. And you underdo it, it lo loses the taste. So maybe right balance of measurement is required. Why this is required specifically in this is just the first point that I spoke. There is a transaction level and there is a feeling level. You always can't measure the feeling. Maybe you can have an effort estimate just to have your operational efficiency of the team. Maybe you have a customer experience team, which the whole job is to, uh, you know, give delightful customer experiences. Maybe to, uh, you know, measure their progress. You have an internal measurement tool, but you really can't measure it outside and there's no 100% measurement. And the feedback solicitation, the uh, one uh, crude example I would say is when we think we are done with the 100% product and we go, they make that as a drawing board and they draw comments over that, right? So that becomes your prototype, then being the product. So, you know, you just have to, you know, measure your efforts and make sure that, okay, allow people to change, uh, change your thinking, change, allow them to iterate your thinking, maybe fundamental ways you should, you should allow them to change. So go with some small efforts and uh, like, like right, uh, Darshan said, uh, just take it to people uh, even before uh, we have the final product and measure the effort. So this, the rest of the effort is saved in making the product. Maybe we are startups, so we are struggling in that startup phase. This might not be applicable for you know brands establishment. They have been doing this perfection for a lot of time, but that is from my end. Sure, sure. Darshan, that also brings a perspective stating if technology, see technology helps in the experience fact. But if technology is implemented poorly or not coupled with the right human intention, could that also be a, a bad experience? Like for instance, recently both Zuhas and I were in an airport and we were trying to get a cab. For no reason, no cabs were available. And suddenly you talk on the phone, fantastic technology, everything answered by technology, but we are used to picking to talk to some guy and say, Bhaiya, come I will, you know? That kind of an experience. What happens? I mean, from a technology and experience. So you know, uh, I, I remember one of the Amar Chaturkata stories where the monkey is given a sword, right? And he cuts out the king's nose. She already left. You, may <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so technology is a dual-edged sword. In itself, it is neither good or bad. And you rightly said the intent and the way it is implemented. That's where a majority of the failures happen, right? I believe there's a lot of power. Uh, you know, I think one great example gave and Satya touched upon 
was the fact that now you are able to collect signals at a lot of different levels which earlier you were not right so that is the power of technology now how do you you know recognize signals from the noise and how do you make use of it to you and that gets us into a little bit of a what i call is the dark arts and in my white paper i talk about the personalization quotient versus the creepiness quotient right how intrusive are you how much are you actually trying to collect uh, which kind of helps you manipulate your behavior that is different from saying how do i improve my product right and i've seen the people straddle and struggle with all of these and a great example is that you know one of the most popular uh, social media platform is listens to you no matter what you do you know what phone you use how much you tweak what whatever silencing you do it always does and i have done actually personal experimentation to test it out and actually show it to a number of people right so so those are kind of things that you know technology from a technology perspective it should avoid in terms of implementation you know what classically happens in enterprises is that each organization silo that are either customer facing or product facing you can take marketing and sales example product engineering or customer support example right they sometimes behave in silos another great example is you already have that product and they keep sending you this promotional brochures hey buy my cable buy my this guys i am your customer right why why does happen the product and the account team has no clue what the marketing team is doing why because the technologies are not connected the people are not connected nothing is connected the crm system bombards you with you know promotions this that blah 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 but it's not connected with anything in terms of understanding your habits what do you buy month over month with in your store you already have that inventory just tell me and give me promotion based on what i'm buying i'm not i'm not a meat eater i don't buy meat you know I, this is funny thing three weeks in a row I get infant food samples in my mailbox and i'm like you know somebody's personalization and segmentation has gone for a toss i have no clue right how that happened i was almost wanting to write to that company hey you know what i'll i'll talk to you for free and if you fix it but man this is this is beyond what it is right so today technology is very powerful you know you can measure the micro moments the micro expressions you know we have tools which we use in focus groups for example where they are eye moments and and you know where you are looking at where you pause the heat maps i am able to with a with a high degree of accuracy able to tell you you know what are the friction that your customers are facing right so use that to improve your product don't use it to kind of you know what i do what i say is get dark and get creepy into your customer and try to manipulate their behavior another very simple example with gp uh, gdpr a uh, lot of privacy statements every site displays a privacy statements right how many actually display that select all more bright than the others or something which you don't find you don't find okay how do i deselect this it's it's only accept all i believe that is manipulation that's not trust that's not transparency so technology in itself is is a is a great uh, weapon i would say is a great ally how you use it defines you and defines your customer experience perfect thank you i think that was good story and i like the experience maybe i need to check your history okay i'll come to you <laughs> i mean why these are all the tech folks we are talking about technology and its ability to help us talk to me from a publishing angle how important is cx and what role the cx play in our publishing traditionally has always focused more on the product than on the customer experience because the idea is that once you hold a, a book in your hand you will lose yourself in the world the experience is the product itself right it's immersive you will escape into a different world into a world of your imagination and uh, you that itself so i i only need to we've always been focusing only on that core product because that product was the experience and you're going to buy it from a, a place where i don't control the experience which is a bookshop right typically you would go to a bookstore and it could be a dingy hole in the wall bookstore or it could be a fancy big uh, you know modern uh, store i don't control all i can do is make sure my product is available at all places but now again that game changes uh, with uh, e-commerce as well as uh, digital coming uh, officially our digital revenues have now crossed our print revenues so we are focusing i mean all these are new lessons uh, which we are learning so right from like darshan was saying you know to map out every touch point of the customers uh, experience their journey with you 
right from the time they discover your product or how do they discover it is it are you, are you spam people are you giving them multiple reminders for the same thing or are you uh, making yourself uh, visible to new audiences uh, we've seen 30% of our users are actually coming from uh, outside india right which which wasn't the case in our print our print was very much indian we had a small export business but it was very small suddenly i'm seeing it's truly become a global brand because i'm seeing uh, people tuning in from different countries uh, our online workshops we had we realized in the pandemic we had to do a batch on us time a batch on europe time uh, we had uh, kids tuning in from all over the world so we were doing special sessions for them uh, so all of these things are uh, are the way the brand is being experienced by a customer what is amachita katha in a in a mind versus what is amachita katha in a 10 year old's mind are are two different things the love is the same but i want them to experience it differently absolutely absolutely so yeah so so why is this experience important in digital you being in this product thing? see digital is a whole new world like uh it is said uh that when people read they get into the new world just like people read they, they read the letters and they conceive the meaning and they get into the world and same action when we see screens or we, we get into digital world we are really into the digital world so uh, it is it is no different from from a you know coffee day and chatting to a starbucks right so how does it differentiate everybody sells coffee but how does starbucks differentiate it's the ambience and it's the you know everything else there is there are, there are smaller aspects that are covered right in that sense uh, we have to give importance to a lot of minute details when we get on to digital a lot of times what happens is this is a you know this is nobody's problem if, if you ask me um, maybe a little elderly generation they are not blessed with uh, used to technology they struggle a lot generation like us we are half baked we, we born where uh, technology was not there now when we grow up the technology is there and maybe the new generation kids are like fully born with technology so these three things uh, i think we have to balance at least at a broad level these three categories if we really look at that can be there the other part is when i talk about my own you know technology scape which i last five years i've been only working on this so this experience itself getting more granular for example the word experience if you say it is a normal experience for if you take ar we are kind of a technology it is a first person experience and you have a multi multi path experience which means you choose your story you can choose your path you can choose the cameraman's perspective if you are like watching a movie uh, you are today watching the cameraman's view today tomorrow if you become the cameraman what happens that is a wild imagination but still these kind of possibilities are getting really bigger but as a last point but uh, i i would really want to uh, you know uh, uh, sensitize people about what darshan spoke about the intent of uh, you know the true intent where uh, trust matters people's privacy matters Uh, if you ask me 10 years before uh, how did google make make money they gave everything for free i was thinking okay they are a really good super good company but today it, it's a little creepy for me to say the same words to my own kid right it's it's not that same way they have been uh, you know i think uh, at least now when the world realizes we are a new generation entrepreneurs at least we ourselves we should not become uh, uh, the intent should be clear and what we want we have to communicate there is there is definitely business out of intent also you can really make some good business if you are as as uh, darshan rightly pointed out if you use the technology right and you are able to get the metrics at a deeper level maybe measure uh, in vr also we have that uh, you know eye tracking everything and you are genuine and you give the benefit to the customer and he is willing to pay and he is uh, clear about what benefit he gets then it it, it is good without knowing him you have a log data and you know that that's i think everybody will uh, technology forever and uh, nobody is going to have anything and, and just because you mentioned some names at least let me take myself out of it gafam i am not on this conference uh, <laughs> i don't want anybody to track me down on this darshan final question to you so you know while we talk about all of these things uh, in terms of the experience why it should be important the goodness badness and measurements and so on and so forth do we really need a strategy for cx i think everything needs a strategy you know you could happily you're right what you earlier said it's common sense everybody can do on its own right uh, about last year we all had a lot of time i did my own flooring in my basement now anybody walking there would say okay i guess you did it now 
Of course, if I go to a practitioner, if I go to a expert or a consultant, as you say it, they could have done a far better job, far less time <laughs> and a much more better thing, right? So, you know, I, I like the fact that we do experimentation as a part of the strategy to test out a specific hypothesis. I think a lot of startup gets lost in either the fail fast mechanism that was, you know, uh, again, it's prevalent and a lot of books have been written on the lean methodologies and so on. But it's not just the sake of IAT, it's the sake of validating a hypothesis and all that requires a strategy. In fact, you know, I'm currently speaking to a, a mid-sized organization exactly on this. And I'm stressing to their leadership the fact that you need to have strategy. It acts as a guardrails. It unites your organization to your North Star. It helps everybody create that common experience so that, you know, whatever, let's say Satya feels is the right experience for their customer is not same as what I feel is, is the right thing for my customer. It unifies your brand identity. And I think strategy what are the root is just about planning. And, you know, everybody says 80% is in planning and 20% in execution. If you do the reverse, then you're continuously planning. Right. It's it's just the effort distribution, whether you do it at the start, middle or end, you're going to have to spend that effort where it is up to you. Perfect. And uh, Preeti has been very, very kind enough to give us an experience of all the three products. Right. We're talking about hey, Amar Chitra Kata, Tinkle on the Mac Geo license software, 21 days free trial. So we will be sending that in an email to you. Please go download and experience that with that Preeti, some closing comments from you. Thank you for inviting me. A very, very great, uh, very insightful session. Uh, lots to learn from Darshan and Satya. And uh, yeah, read more Amachutta Katha. That's all I can say. <laughs> Shamelessly plugging my product. <laughs> you should, you should. Yes. Satya, from your end, close yeah. and come. Absolutely. It was very nice. In fact, um, I, gone, I had gone back to my school days uh, listening to PT. And I have a kid now. I, I will definitely, you know, make sure that she has uh, this experience. Uh, definitely uh, a nice, uh, it was a formal session as such. It was a very, uh, you know, casual session. I really loved being a part of this. Thank you. I think, thank you, you know, Kaushik, Sahas, Chatinar. I think this is brilliant. I think bringing and learning from all these experiences is an amazing experience to me. And I definitely learned a lot. You know, the way Preeti talked about her product, and the way the whole life cycle from print to digital and the evolution of of such an iconic brand i i just can't imagine right it's 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 kind of gives me goosebumps and of course satya is at the leading edge of what's happening out there in the world so would love to learn more and i you know i'm i'm amazed at this the way this is orchestrated and you know again thank you so much it's an honor to be here welcome suhas this was a delight for me to listen listen to people that i have known or in, in case of Preeti, I have ripped her once saying that I have had a longer association with ACK than she has had because I met um, Mr. Pai a couple of times in ACK quizzes and Delhi. But nevertheless, I think the two, three things that I picked and I loved all, all those two, three things. The first I thought was human intent. And I keep saying it to my clients, otherwise as well, uh, dealing with transformation. If you don't have the right human intent, no technology will be able to get you across the river. What is that? The second is, as you have the right human intent, how is it that you take the first step and create that signal from yourself? How do you create the signal that the stimulus from the customer comes back to you? Or is it, a, is it that you're getting to a situation where you throw a product out and see and something happens to it? Yeah, maybe it's stuff sells. You don't know how the hell it's. So are you wanting to create the stimulus? Are you wanting to create that, that channel back to yourself. And that again goes back to that human intent, whether that's happening or not. To me, the human intent, the human interaction, that that rule, that's that's business. Technology enables. Thank you, speakers. Preeti, lovely seeing you again. Satya, you too. Darshan after 20 years. Koshik, thanks so much for hosting this. This is delightful. Delightful. A fun, happy session. And all the all the attendees. Thank you so much. Thank you. For making time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.